know, from West Coast to East Coast, East Coast to West Coast, um, you know, to me, it's, it's not a problem. Just plow out there and do your job. Three for 15. Let's go fold. <laughs> Let's go fold this week. That's all I can think about. Welcome into Teal the Show. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside 1010 XL's Frank Frangi, and we'll have Jaguars team reporter Ashlyn Sullivan joining us here in a second. Frank, as you just heard, the guys are excited to head out to the West Coast to take on the Chargers on Sunday, but the Jaguars historically have struggled out West. Only three for 15 all time. You know, that's, that number's accurate, Jamal, but I'm also going to guess they're probably not very good in the central time zone or in the mountain <laughs> time zone. The bottom line is they've been a struggling franchise. One winning season in the last 12 or 13 or whatever it is. So I think we make a, lot, a big deal about the West Coast because teams on the East don't go there very often. Right. I think it's been a struggling team. I'm not worried about the West Coast. I worry a little bit about the fact the Chargers have a lot of good players, but I think the West Coast thing's overrated. Speaking of those good players, the one that we've been watching all week, quarterback Justin Herbert, he's had a rib injury that he's been dealing with, but he's practiced. It looks like he's going to go on Sunday. I spoke with Matt Money Smith, the play-by-play -play voice of the Chargers earlier this week, and he's pretty convinced that Herbert's going to try. Now, try doesn't mean you finish the game. Right. It's a pain thing. I don't think he can injure it worse from what everybody's saying, but he's got to endure pain. Apparently, rib cartilage is really a, really a painful injury, and that's what he's got to deal with. So there's no doubt in my mind Herbert's going to try and play. How long he plays, we'll have to see. Of course, Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson, a former quarterback himself, knows a thing or two about trying to play through those sorts of rib injuries. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. Um, you know, you're dealing with just just body movements all the time. You know, I remember when I did mine, um, sitting down, sneezing, coughing, laughing, all that kind of stuff can kind of agitate and irritate the area. Um, but it just takes it just takes you know time to heal. Frank, if Justin Herbert does go, this defense is going to have their hands full. But they had a really good showing a week ago, pitching a shutout against the Colts. The, the tough thing is, how do you one-up a shutout? Yeah, no, you're right. They played very well. I'm not surprised they played well, Jabal. I think they've got a very good defense. This is a different challenge. Really good receivers. The Colts didn't have great receivers. Pittman, their best receiver, didn't play. This is really good receivers. Mike Williams, a big physical a body control guy. Keenan Allen, maybe the best route runner in the league. Now, he might not play either. He's banged up a little bit. But the challenge is outside. The pass rushers have to get to Herbert. Now, he won't be as mobile, I don't think, Jabal, even if he plays because of the injury. But he moves around in that pocket, and the receivers are really good. So a whole different challenge for the Jags this week. And these are the sorts of challenges that this defense needs to excel in if they're going to get the respect that they think they deserve in the NFL. I feel like we still have stuff left out there. Like, that wasn't our best game. And I don't think people understand that. That wasn't our best game. You know, it looks good, but that just wasn't our best. It says a standard, man. We got to come like that every week. We got to come prepared. Um, I feel like we did a good job of preparing um, that whole week last week. We just got we to do the same thing and even more. Um, as the season goes on, we have to do more. Um, we have to prepare more, uh, do a better job of just getting ourselves ready to play. Frank, last week, of course, the defense was able to get the job done and led the team to their first win of the season. Doug Peterson talked about the, after that loss in week one how it just didn't sit well with a lot of the players. They knew they could have won that game. This week, coming off a win, Young teams have to know how to respond and continue to build. Well, you saw one thing for sure, Jamal. They're a good team, and they know they've got a good team. That's why it bugged them. That's why it's kind of sat in the pit of their stomach, because they probably were better than the commanders and didn't win the game. They've got a pretty good team. But you're right, handling success is different. They got a lot of pats on the back this week. Everybody was patting them on the back. That's why they said, so what, now what? That's kind of been the phrase this week for that reason. Okay, you got pats on the back. Forget about it. Now you play a really good team. Got to play that well again. But I like the mental makeup. I like the psychological psychological makeup of this group, Jamal. I really do. I think they're hungry. They're young. They're not entitled. I like this group. I think they're going to, from a mental standpoint, they're going to go on the road the right way. And while some of the Jaguars teams in the past may have taken the win and actually let off the gas, this group pressing it down harder now. Because we've tasted a little bit of victory. I think guys want that. Um, our coaching staff wants that. So I think, I think it's more hunger, if anything. I think we're more hungry. Because I feel like we haven't got the respect that we are, uh, that we still are trying to earn and, and that we feel like that we deserve. So I feel like we're more hungry than we were when we came off the loss. So it's crazy. You get a little bit of the taste of success. Yeah, you you get, and I feel like now it's like that show the people what type of team that we really are, and that's go earn our respect and then make sure we go take it. So we at that point right now. We're going to take respect. Frank, it, it'll be exciting to see just how much this team can continue to grow week by week. Coming up after the break as Teal the Show continues, we'll bring in Jaguars team reporter Ashlyn Sullivan as we get you ready for the Chargers kickoff. That's straight ahead. Stay tuned. More Teal the Show right after this. Welcome back into Teal the Show. 
Frank. We're now joined by Ashlyn Sullivan, Jaguars team reporter. Ashlyn, this has been an exciting week here in Jacksonville. It always feels good when it's a victory week. You're coming off of a victory, but the team had to quickly refocus because they got a big test this week. They do, and it's only week three, but we look at this Los Angeles Chargers game, and I make the argument it's the toughest game on the schedule. Besides going to Kansas City in November, this is it, and it is week three, and you have to bounce back quickly. Frankly, I'm looking at if this team stays competitive in this game. That shows how far the Jaguars have come. I've had a lot of questions. Oh, my gosh, they're going to win. Look how great they looked a week ago. If they can stay competitive with this Los Angeles team, that shows me how different this Jaguars team is just from a year ago. That's right, Ashlyn, because this is considered to be one of the better teams in the NFL the Chargers are. Frank, if the Jaguars are just competitive, can this be like a measuring stick game almost for them? You can see where the team is in the process based yeah, on this game. I do think so. I think Ashlyn's right. I think next to the Chiefs, this is the toughest game they will play. But I don't think this is a moral victory team. I think they're going to be in most games. I don't think anyone's going to roll these guys. Now, look, the NFL's a long season. A lot of things happen. But I don't think this is a team that's going to necessarily feel good because they played a team close. But I agree with both you and Ashlyn. If they do hang around in this game, people are going to start talking about it. But know this. If they win this game, this is the serve notice game. Because if they win this game, everybody in the league is going to be talking about them. It's been a long time since that's the case. Last week, I don't think anybody thinks was a fluke. But if they win this week, nobody will think last week's a fluke. So this is sort of a serve notice game if they're able to win. Frank, you've been covering this team for a while. You kind of talked about the mental makeup of this group earlier in the show. Do you think the mental makeup of this group is the right kind to, to be able to serve that notice and keep their foot on the gas the rest of the way? I think that was a big part of how they built this team. I think it wasn't just good players. It was players that are, that are made up the right way, the guys that are not going to be entitled, guys that are not going to necessarily be trash talkers, guys that are going to play practice hard. They're going to come in early and leave late. I've talked to, to Doug about that a lot, and I think that's what he's built. Now, it's a young team, Jamal. Very so young. young teams sometimes win one they're not supposed to win and lose one they're not supposed to lose because they got, they got a lot of those 23 to 25s more than those 27 to 29s, which means they're going to be good for a number of years. But I, I like the makeup of this team. I like who they are personally as well as football players. I really do. It, it's a very good group. And the, just being in the locker room, it's always fun to be in there. One of the guys I got to talk with this week, Rayshon Jenkins, who, of course, is a former Chargers player, Ashland. This secondary should have a big test this week. Rayshon even told me he's got some unfinished business with this Chargers team. Oh, yeah. For Rayshon Jenkins coming off his first interception with the Jaguars last season, you can tell he's hungry and he wants some more and no matter what they say there is absolutely now a count of how many interceptions each member of the secondary has they can't tell me otherwise they are definitely keeping notice of this this is a huge game for Andre Sisco and Rayshon Jenkins I argue their biggest challenge since they became Jaguars we saw the secondary perform so well last week can they do it again on one of the biggest stages that, that's the true test, and I know we're giving this Chargers offense a lot of love, but that Chargers defense has a lot of talent on it, too. Ashlyn, this should be a big test for the Jaguars' offensive line just to be able to protect Trevor because those Chargers' pass rushers are something serious. They really are. They are scary, frankly, to watch on TV, at least for me, but I'm not an offensive lineman. Jawan Taylor, he's one of the highest graded offensive linemen right now, and Coach Peterson talked about it on Friday. The grade is great. Yes, he's playing awesome, but his job right now is just to protect Trevor Lawrence. Can he do that against a lethal pass rush here on Sunday? That's the next test. Jawan Taylor won that job. Now, can he keep it this week? That is the big question, Frank. And how important will it be for them to be able to keep this pass rush at bay and move Trevor around a little bit to give him some time to throw? My guess is they will move the pocket a little bit. But you know what I like about this matchup? The Jags' best offensive lineman in my mind are the two tackles. Juwan's playing great, as Ashlyn pointed out, and Cam Robinson is as well. Well, this team has ends. The tackles on this team are not as good. They played Payne and Allen the first game with Washington and then DeForest Buckner last week. So they've really gotten some good tackles. The tackles aren't as good on this Chargers team. The ends are, but the ends are where we block the best, where this team blocks the best. So I kind of like the matchup, but I think you're right. I think you got to move Trevor around a little bit, give him a chance to see clearly. That was a big part of the game plan a week ago. Well, the one thing that we've seen that Trevor likes to do when he has some time to throw is find Christian Kirk. Through the first two weeks, he's gone to Christian Kirk nonstop. Ashlyn, you, you know I'm right here. Uh, do you think Christian Kirk can keep up the pace that we've seen from him early in the year? We joke he's doing the impossible, which is <laughs> playing up to a free agency contract. That big money, oh my gosh, you're not worth it. I make the argument he is worth every single penny he has made in at least the first two weeks. My question at this point is, 
Zay Jones. That was the storyline of training camp in preseason was this wide receiver. Now, we talk about unselfish receiver play. Zay Jones is the reason Christian Kirk is having so much success, taking that safety away from Kirk. I'm wondering when he gets going, because if Kirk keeps this pace up, man, he absolutely has played up to his contract. And it could be this week. You know, the Chargers like to play a lot of man coverage, and they even double some receivers sometimes. That might open up Zay Jones. You know, on that fourth down last week, next-gen stats have him as the sixth fastest receiver so far this season. So Zay Jones got some wheels. Well, know this, too. <laughs> now the word is out they go to Christian Kirk. Right. So the league, the league always punches back. So now that it's clear Trevor's looked for Christian Kirk a bunch, uh, he's going to get doubled. He's, so is Evan Ingram. I think Zay Jones does step up. Now, Zay Jones is good. He hasn't done anything wrong. There's just only one ball. You play with one ball at a time. There's only so many passes to go around. He's their deep threat. I wouldn't be surprised to see some balls down the field. I think you're going to see a lot of Zay Jones before it's all over. All right, Frank, it's time to pick the game. How do you feel the Jaguars can do on Sunday? You know, I did you a favor by picking the Colts last week, okay? So I'm going <laughs> to stay with this. Um, look, almost anybody else, the way I feel about the way the Jags are playing right now, I'd pick the Jags. This is tough. This is a West Coast game against a team that a lot of people think are going to the Super Bowl. Again, Matt Smith told me this week, the play-by-play -play guy, they expect to go to the Super Bowl. This team is built for the Super Bowl. They're playing at home. They've already got one loss. I think this is a tough challenge for the Jags. Uh, I was wrong last week. I want to be wrong again this week, but I think it's a tough challenge. All right, Ashlyn Franks, not picking the Jags. How are you feeling? Until they win a road game, I can't pick the Jaguars. They have to win a road game, and everyone talks about the West Coast. They can't play away from home, frankly, in the past couple of years. So when they win a road game, I have confidence that the Jaguars can win outside of Jacksonville, not to even mention the Chargers. I think this is a competitive game, though, and frankly, I wouldn't have said that a year ago. I would have said that the Jaguars couldn't compete with the Chargers on the West Coast. I think it's close, and that speaks volumes where the Jaguars are. Look, just saying that it's competitive does mean that this team has come a long way. I think we're pretty much in unison that the Jaguars are probably going to come up short in this one. But my big question is just how healthy are those ribs for Justin Herbert? If somehow those ribs aren't good to go and you see Chase Daniel in this game, all of a sudden you're like, all right, I feel pretty good about where the Jaguars are at. So there's a chance because, as you mentioned, that rib injury, pretty painful. Frank, Ashlyn, thanks for joining us for Teal the Show, and thank you at home for tuning in. As always, we'll see you next week. Good night, and go Jags.